The mining operation and quarrying operation regulations were introduced in 2013 under urgency. There was a commitment at the time to ensure a review. This was completed in 2019 with consultation from industry. There are some key changes, in particular a steep change for quarrying operations. There are two new terms, A grade quarrying operation and B grade quarrying operation to reflect the differentiated risk management systems based on the number of quarry workers on a site. The principal hazard management definition is also being clarified and certificates of competence will be updated. There will also be a new alluvial mine manager COC. Shortly you'll hear from five quarry operators sharing their perspective of the new regulations and how they're going to approach implementing those changes. Every company's greatest asset is the, is the individuals that are working for them. In an industry like ours we've got high risk uh, so the outcomes can be pretty negative if you're not managing things properly. Part of these changes that we're going through at the moment was actually led by industry. It's not just someone else telling us what we want, we've kind of led this change as an industry as a whole. The thing about the quarry industry is you've got the large organisations that obviously have well developed health and safety systems and they've been developed by an HR team in an office somewhere and then you've got a small operator who's just a one man band on the river, all have got the same risk profile but just on different levels. So the benefits we've seen on site um, since implementing the health and safety management system is the recording of data in one place um, which is accessible and uh, can be easily shared. The benefits for having a health and safety management plan is it gives you a baseline, uh, it gives you a reference tool for how you operate your site on a daily basis, how you manage the risks and the hazards that are involved with that and it goes into your, your training documents. Really the key for health and safety systems is it, a piece of paper is not going to save anybody's life, but it gives you a, a guide. What the Health and Safety Management System does um, for us is it provides a lot of clarity um, for our guys who are in operational roles. They've had to have input into what's in that system, so it's not a top-down approach, you know, and also what achieves, you know, like again, that end goal of sending everybody home healthy and safe. I don't want to be a part of a business or industry that wants to leave things to chance. So here at Huntley, we're quite a large quarry operation and we have a lot of multifaceted operations going on, a lot of different complexities in the nature of the geology. So when we look at PHMPs for this site specifically, we're looking at areas where we potentially could have multiple fatalities. Um, for us, um, because we have over 30 staff on site one day, so we have to use light vehicles like a bus to transfer guys into the quarry, you know, so that's number one, that is our first risk there of having a multiple fatality, so we need to tick that box, yes, we've done our risk assessment, okay. So PHMPs are designed where you're going to have multiple fatalities, not on every risk you have on site, but where you can identify that multiple people are going to get killed. So we do have a site emergency plan here on site and under the new regulations there will be some extra detail needed to be incorporated into that plan. Um, it's not a very daunting process but in the start it was a little bit overwhelming but it wasn't until we got full worker engagement buy-in that the process seemed a lot simpler and it was very easy for us to work through. We actually test that every six months do a desktop scenario and then once a year we'll do a full site job. Multiple fatality risks are pretty consistent throughout the industry. Uh, it'll be things like uh, your traffic movement around site, uh, strata control. It's important to manage the, the principal hazards first because those are the things that are going to be the fatalities or the, the worst possible outcomes for the industry. So there's going to be some new terminology that is going to be coming out. One will be an A-grade quarry operation and also a B-grade quarry operation. And that will be determined by how many quarry workers on site. The changes to the A and B grade I think is largely driven by individual risk profiles in the companies. So if you've got a larger complex site then you'll need somebody with the qualifications to be able to manage that. 
but it, in, in turn it wouldn't be fair to have the expectation that somebody that's on the river, one man band, are going out to get their A grade. So I think the, the move's been positive to understand what the risk profile is for each individual company and then making sure that you've got the right qualifications and people in charge to be able to do that. So that'll be looking at the amount of people that are working there, traffic movements, uh, the use of explosives, all that sort of stuff. We've got uh, two types of sites. We've got fixed plant sites and we've got mobile sites sort of out in the country areas. So if we're training up a new guy, we'll, we'd like to have him in uh, on one of our fixed plants for a while, figure out you know what they're going to be like, teach them how to how to drive the loader, how to drive the digger under under the good supervision, and then out on the mobile sites as well. With each mobile site is run by a, a B grade quarry manager uh, at least, and with a overseeing A grade quarry manager as well who will get around th those quarries weekly to do inspections of the quarry itself. The regs require us to have um, um, operators and staff on site that are competent. We've probably got a few gaps in, in re reminding ourselves to you know, document some of those training aspects and as they move on to the bigger machines or to a different machine or having new plants introduced. With the changes to the MOQ Schedule 5, we won't have to make too many major system changes to how we report these internally. It's just having to report it to WorkSafe now as well, instead of just the board or um, higher management. It's uh, really important to make sure that you're proactive, uh, to make sure that your principal hazards are managed, because you know the, uh, the, the possibility of having a fatality is the quarryman's worst nightmare. Um, nobody wants it. You know, we spend a lot of time with the guys on our site. They you know, become part of your family. I think it can only improve the way you know WorkSafe can get an idea of what's what's going on across the industry as a whole, where key pinch points are throughout the whole industry, I suppose, and, and what are the key things that they need to be focused on when they're doing their inspections. It's hugely important for WorkSafe to be part of the industry, not necessarily a tourist in the industry, if that makes sense. You want to have that relationship where you can pick up the phone and, and, um, and say, look, these are the issues that we're having. You know, it's going to be a collegial approach. We're all after the same thing at the end of the day. We want to get our blokes home safe. And um, so to have that relationship with WorkSafe is key. What we try to do is move together as an industry in a whole, and that's, and that's about bouncing ideas off other operators, maybe talking to other quarry managers, and you can get some help and guidance and, and make an informed decision from there. Uh, for myself and Gleason Quarries, working with a regulator has actually been a very good thing for us. Where we might be struggling with a certain issue, we might be maybe racking our brains, how do we guard this, or I'm having an issue in this traffic management area, bring them on board because they've seen how other operators work and they can bring that knowledge to your site and, and really help you build your traffic management plan, your emergency response, your PHMPs, like work safer there actually to help us to get us through this journey. We've got a number of people working towards their B grade uh, COC and then onto the A grade COC. The benefits are huge because it gives those guys a lot more knowledge as to what the rules and regulations that we're working under and it gives you a good succession planning. People matter, they're a big part of what we do and um, they become like a family after a while and, uh, and so yeah, supporting them and, and making sure that they're safe and, and getting home every night is, is a big deal. I'm actually the fourth generation quarryman and coal miner in my family so I'm extremely proud I've got a family lineage going back there. Another big driver for why I get out of bed and I come to work and I crush work is that I'm actually improving people's lives in regards to crushing aggregate for roading, waste water treatment plants, concrete for their housing. We might not think we're actually helping people on a day to basis, but we look as we look at it as a holistic approach, we're actually improving people's lives. Obviously the people who work in the industry, you know, they are like your family as well. So you just have to take care of them and it's, yeah, it's really important. Um, for me, I, I grew up in a, in, in a town where quarrying in our ancestral river was something that a lot of me uncles and that all worked in and always loved the machines. We have a huge sense of social obligation 
um, to the people of the communities um, and families that um, we work in. And we have a strong um, social agenda as a part of our business and it's about people and communities. I was always that kid in the, uh, the sand pit with the trucks and the diggers and I grew up around it. But then uh, once you get your teeth into the business side of things, it can be a really rewarding industry. You know, you're turning big rocks into little rocks, it's not, it's not brain science, but to manage a team of individuals to be able to do that and do it profitably, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty rewarding.